be calm and not come through the podium this time. I apologize. Are uh, you guys ready? Good. <laughs> Yeah, I, I gotta say, I gotta say that that uh, John and Matt and all the guys uh, did an awesome job in the draft, and and uh, yeah, we're fired up because we got some some return potential, and so yes, uh, needless to say, we were we were all smiles after uh, after draft day. When you're running these practices now, the special teams portion of the practices, how much are you carrying over from what was the template for Dave Tobe and Kansas City and Florida, and how much is your own? Right, yeah, that's a that's a, a good question because now uh, I've combined what I brought from Kansas City with what my assistant Chris Gold learned from his mentor Joe D, and and so it's it's kind of a it's a great uh, way to to create this uh, this hodgepodge. You kind of you pull together all the good ideas that you think are are the best of what we know, and and um, and we roll from there. So yeah, there there is there's the majority of it is the stuff that that I brought from from Kansas City, no question. But as I've said many times before, I'm very fortunate to have Chris Gold as my assistant because he brings a lot to the table. So, Mr. Early, what have you seen so far in the Isaiah. Isaiah, I think, is is so far is at, as advertised. He's he's you know he's he's had a, an auspicious start. He's uh, quick. He's fast. He's got great hands. Uh, seems to be uh, smart. Has a good football acumen. So we're fired up about him so far. What do you think about being reunited with D'Angelo Henderson? Loved it. Never expected it. Wished for it kind of in the back of my mind, but I figured that. You know he'd be off the table, but but and then too, you know the probability of that happening is is slim. So very excited. I'm I'm really I'm excited more for him because he has a you know he has a person in house that he knows and he feels comfortable with. I remember being a rookie and you, you're going to a faraway place, and so uh, more happy for him and his family and and for his opportunity here with us. And I know he's going to bring a lot to the table. Yeah, that's that's uh, that's a great question because a lot of these guys are coming from college and where they were the superstar and they haven't played special teams for two or three years. Some of them have never played special teams, the four phases. And so we try to, it's all projections really at this point because you haven't seen anybody in pads yet. You haven't seen anybody strike or play in space like they're going to have to play for us on Sunday. So a lot of it's projection, but we can look at a guy and look at his, his speed, how he changes direction, how he, you know, how, how he learns, how he plays uh, in space, and all that stuff. So we, we try to do our best to project, and and then we see where the where the chips fall. And then, in training camp is when we can we can do a lot of really good evaluating. Once we get the pads on and see who's uh, who's a disruptor, who's a playoff guy, et cetera, et cetera. Mm. Love that guy. He's got juice, man, and he, and he's a linear speed guy. Whereas Isaiah is more of a of a sort of a shifty guy, a COD guy. Carlos is your downhill, run behind your pads, run through smoke, as we say for kickoff returners. I mean, he's got courage. That's the type of kid we like uh, as a, as a kick returner. So very very excited about about Carlos as well. And he's he runs angry with the ball in his hand, and we love that. Exactly. That, that was, that's a great comparison. And he's, he's a kid who we think we can line up at Gunner, too, on punt and, and probably outside and, and jam Gunners. And he's got a lot, he's got a lot of qualities, a lot of, he's got a high ceiling, put it that way. We're, we're fired up about him. Yeah. Uh, BJ was helping your young returners yesterday. Uh, what kind of luxury is that to have the head coach back there helping you? It's awesome to have to have a head coach who, who number one invests in special teams. I mean, he's at he's at all my meetings, he's listening in, and he he knows what's going on. I love that. And then he's right there in a the practice, getting in the thick of things, and you can hear him. I mean, just his presence there is huge for us because then that that especially to the young guys, the rookies. I mean, they see okay, man, the head coach is here during special teams practice. Okay, this is saying something. So it's awesome. It's awesome. VJ gets it, and I'm very fortunate to be his special teams coordinator, no question.
Brock, we didn't see Khalif Raymond out there yesterday practicing. Where does he fit in in the return game picture? Khalif has a lot of talent. And uh, in the, the few games he played in last year, we've evaluated that. And, and he's, a, he's a guy who's right in the mix as far as the returners. Unfortunately, as happens a lot in this game, he's out right now because of his hand. But as soon as he gets back, I mean, Khalif's right in the mix. So um, just got to let, uh, let time heal it. Yeah. Yeah. I'll say this about Brandon. I think he has, I think he has a pretty good presence in the locker room. Whereas you know a lot of kickers don't. A lot of kickers are they can be sort of uh, loners, so to speak, or whatever. And they're or they're you know they're the specialists, and so they're kind of a group apart. But I don't think Brandon is seen that way in our locker room. That's just my my gut feeling right now from what I've seen. Uh, so. I think you know him. The idea of him being a captain, I love that about him. I love that he aspires to be that leader. I really do, and I love the fact that he's here and he's he's on a daily basis. He's grinding. I think guys respect that about him. And he's got he's got a good personality. You know, he's he's a very uh, gregarious, outgoing guy, and guys like him. So, and he's got confidence. I mean, that's swag. Right? People like that. All right? He's good like that. When it comes to special teams, to have the kicker and punter spot solidified. Does that help? I mean, obviously they get a lot of attention, but does that help to at least have those two spots take care of? Yes, it does. There's no question. We, we're, we're really fortunate to have two guys who are young, talented, big legs, high ceilings. And again, I'll go back to, to Chris Gold. He did a great job with those guys, kind of molding those guys uh, the past couple of years. So we're very fortunate. That's, that's a huge relief now. Uh, on, on that same note, you know, it's the NFL and things change. And, you know, if a guy goes down, we got to have guys – you know, in the in the bullpen, and so we're we're constantly evaling guys, obviously. But we're very fortunate right now in the situation that we have here, no question. Coach and, yeah, good. I was gonna say I was just gonna add Casey Creeder, our long snapper, has done a, a fine job as well, and he's he's working his butt off. He's gonna be a good player. Last one, Jeff. Coach, what are the key or different characteristics when you look at a punt returner as opposed to a kick returner, and vice versa? Yeah, so a punt returner, no, number one, catching punts to begin with is very difficult in the NFL, especially because you've got gunners flying down the field. You've got the PP, and they're all very fast, and they're in your face. And it's, it's, a, it's a violent it – can, it can be a violent phase, you know, because you, there's so much speed. Um, but to catch a punt, number one, is difficult to track it, to read it off the punter's foot, to know. you got to know, is it a right-footed punter or is it a left-footed punter because the ball flies differently. So that's one. And then coaching the uh, – or learning from a player's pers perspective, the technique, having independent feet and being able to beat the ball to the spot. And that's before you've even caught it. All right. And then you've got to worry about making these amazing athletes outside miss. And so a punt returner tends to be a little more um, – he has, he has a little more shake to him, a little more lateral movement. Uh, and obviously, you, if you can find the guy who has lateral movement and the home run speed, you've, uh, you've struck gold there. So a kick returner tends to be more of a linear speed guy, like a Carlos Henderson, uh, Cody Latimer type guys who can, who can stick their foot in the ground and get north and south really fast. They have courage to run through smoke, like I mentioned earlier. Uh, they tend to weigh a little bit more. I mean, you want, you want your kick returner – I mean, he's going to – he's running – against the coverage, whereas a lot of times the punt returners are running away from it, or there's, it's just different angles uh, between the two uh, phases. But you like those guys to be able to run behind their pads, and they, they tend to be a little bigger. And so there's a, there's a lot of difference. And plus, it's, it's easier to catch a kickoff. It's easier to, to, easier to track one and beat, beat a kickoff to the spot. So there's a lot of stuff. I could go on a lot uh, about this stuff because I'm passionate, unapologetically passionate about it. And uh, – Yes. So one of the things we do during the season is we keep a running uh, points total uh, on grades, guys, uh, weekly, weekly grades. And so we have a points leader, and we go week to week, and we put the, the, that week's points leader, we put his, his picture right up there uh, front and, and center so everyone could see it. And so... At the end of the year, we tally up the points and we name a points leader. And it's based on a bunch of different criteria, but 
it creates intra-squad competition. The guys are fired up. They can't wait to get in on Tuesday and see, or Monday in this case now, uh, to see when, you know, or how many points they made or what place they're in uh, amongst the team. So it's a great way to create intra-squad competition. And then we also keep our rankings within the NFL, our special teams rankings board as well on the right-hand side so, we, so the guys can see where we stand amongst the other 31 teams. So it's, it's good. So, no, during the season they don't, but we're, we're going to go, we'll, we'll all go to dinner at the end of the year and we'll celebrate the winner. And, and it, it's, it's awesome. It creates, it creates that, that brotherhood. And, you know, special teams is kind of a niche. And uh, so we do everything we can to make, it, to make it feel as special as it really is.